Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. A little bit late today. Lots of housekeeping to take care of. But your boy is here. Your boy is fearless. And your boy is ready to roll. Uh, I appreciate all of you. Outkick the Show brought to you by my friends at Sportsbook Review. Get to Sportsbook Review right now. Make sure you get hooked up. Best possible way that you can with the best rates on any of the gambling, any of the games coming up. NFL Week 2 preseason action starts on Thursday. I can't tell you guys how absolutely giddy I am that we are only about two weeks away from a spectacular start to the college football season. I am so excited about college football season being underway. Um, I was sitting around today and I was just looking at the schedule for week one. I was thinking, how am I going to plot my day out? Am I going to sit back and make sure that, uh, that, you know, like what's my, uh, you know you're excited for college football season when you are sitting around and starting to plot out your day. My seven-year-old is playing flag football and I think we have a flag football game that day, that Saturday that I got to get him to. And so I'm sitting around trying to figure out all the moving parts. Like the best game of college football opening weekend, Washington Auburn. Second best game, in my opinion, right now, as I look at it, Notre Dame against Michigan. Third best game, Miami LSU. Fourth best game, for me, probably going to be Tennessee West Virginia, because I think Alabama is going to completely blow out Louisville. Those would be my five. Am I missing one that you guys think is going to be extraordinary? That's my top five breakdown early. couple weeks early, college football game day viewing. Number one seed, I got Auburn against Washington. Number two spot, I got Michigan-Notre Dame. Number three spot, I feel pretty good about this one. I feel like Miami and LSU. And that's a hell of a top three. Then I got Tennessee-West Virginia. And then I roll in with uh, with Alabama against Louisville in the final uh, in the final of those. Oklahoma against FAU will be a good game too. I'll definitely be gambling on that one. But did you guys agree in general that I nailed the top five? You may disagree with my order. Did Virginia Tech and FSU play week one? That's an intriguing game. That's a pretty intriguing game if Virginia Tech and FSU is in the week one game too. I've underrated that one. That's definitely up there in the top six. I'll have to re, uh, recalibrate that. Uh, but uh, but I think that's right. I think that's a weekend. Oh, that's the Monday night game. Yeah, that's the Monday night game. I'm not worried about that one yet. Because Monday night, I love the ability to sit back and just chill and watch that game. Uh, so that's the Monday night game. Those are the five that I've got coming on Saturday that I can't uh, that I can't wait to watch. So anyway, college football is not very far away. Make sure that you go to sportsbookreview.com. It really does make a difference if you don't believe me. Shopping around to get the best line if you know what side you're going to be on uh, it makes a big difference as to how that is going to shake out. All right, I got to go. I got to give props. I have just noticed of late as a guy from Nashville all right, I am obviously a guy from Nashville. I am always find myself rooting for other guys from Nashville. And so we got Mookie Betts who is an AL MVP candidate from right down the street from where I grew up. We've got Jalen Ramsey who is maybe the best defensive back in the NFL. You've got me who has become a dominant sports media impresario. Shannon Terry creates rivals 24-7 sports. Just gotta say City of Nashville on fire in the world of sports right now just with those four names that I just gave you right off the top there. All right? Gotta tell you, I loved Jalen Ramsey going out and teeing off on everybody in the NFL. Here's the truth. All right, let me tell you this right off the bat. I think that the NFL has become so stultifying and corporate in terms of what they expect players to say and do that oftentimes it's a little bit boring. Okay? Oftentimes the storylines tend to be boring because everybody is so worried about off-field scandal in the NFL that the it's so buttoned up. 
And that's why I think we've spent so much time talking about the anthem because most off-field uh, issues in the NFL, in the NBA, you got guys teeing off on each other all the time. You got drama. You got incredible storylines to follow. College football, I think, gets that. College football, frequently, there's a lot of drama in college football. I would say in the NFL, by and large, they haven't ratcheted up the drama that much. And ultimately, they're in an entertainment league. So I want to hit you with uh, several of these things. Jalen Ramsey had so much to say. All right, Here are all the quarterbacks that he broke down. Uh, he said, Aaron Rodgers does not suck. In one of the all-time least uh, uh, surprising analyses of all time, Aaron Rodgers, who may be the most talented quarterback at the quarterback position of all time, Jalen Ramsey breaks him down and says he does not suck. Derek Carr, I think he's good. I agree with that. Uh, Deshaun Watson, he'll be league MVP in a couple of years. I think that's insanity. But it's a provocative opinion to toss out there. Deshaun Watson has played eight games. I think he'll be pretty good. I think he's going to come back to earth this year like Dak Prescott did. Most of the time, in year two, a guy comes back down to earth. Matthew Stafford, he's straight. I think he means good, not heterosexual, although Matthew Stafford's girlfriend is also really good looking. Phillip Rivers, pretty good. Hall of Fame quarterback, yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, uh, Russell Wilson, good. I think it's fair to say Russell Wilson's good. Tom Brady, does not suck. I would say, probably fair to say, that Tom Brady does not suck. He may be the greatest quarterback of all time. In my mind, he's 1A. Peyton Manning is 1B. They're almost impossible to separate. But Peyton, I think it's fair to say that Tom Brady does not suck. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, better than he gets credit for. I think that's probably fair. I think Tyrod Taylor is probably better than he gets credit for because he gets no credit. All right? It's damning him with faint praise. Great for their team on Marcus Mariota. Uh, I think Marcus Mariota hit Jalen Ramsey with the stiff arm, if I'm not mistaken, to beat the Jags in uh, the final game of the preseason, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Nick Foles, good enough, had a good team. Here are the guys that Jalen Ramsey said stink. Uh, Andrew Luck, don't really think he's that good. That's insane. If Andrew Luck is healthy, he is a phenomenal quarterback in the NFL, but he may not be healthy. Ben Roethlisberger, decent at best. Ben Roethlisberger has won two Super Bowls, and he's a Hall of Famer. Now, he did not play very well in the first game against uh, against Jalen Ramsey. But decent at best, I think probably a little bit of an exaggeration. Uh, Jared Goff, average to above average. I, I might buy that. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, and this is strong, all schemes, I guess you could say he's good. He's a big fan of Schottenheimer. Joe Flacco sucks. He also said Matt Ryan wasn't any good. Um, and uh, and these were the guys that he has played against and how they did. Uh, but that was a uh, pretty phenomenal interview. Now, I am always of the opinion, this is not going to surprise you guys, I want people to be honest and give their honest opinion as the best they can. He went after Josh Allen, said he would have drafted, uh, uh, said he would have drafted him uh, a lot uh, higher. Um, and as a result, he made the decision to, uh, to, to go after Josh Allen. He went after Matt Ryan. There were a lot of guys that had things to say. Now, I know Golden Tate. I've met him a few times. Wesley Tate, we used to have on the show, his brother. And I thought this was, I thought this was pretty funny. Uh, there are already people firing back in the NFL. Eli Manning was asked about Jalen Ramsey's interview. He also said Eli Manning, the only reason he's any good is because, uh, he, has, uh, is because he has Odell Beckham Jr., Evidently, uh, Jalen Ramsey forgetting that Eli Manning won two Super Bowls way before there was any possibility of, uh, of there being any issues here. I think this is pretty funny. Uh, any issues with Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, Eli Manning was asked about it. Manning said no comment. He paused for a moment, then he deadpanned. Who? They play on September 9th. I'm in for this game. I care so much more now about Giants-Jags solely based on what Jalen Ramsey said. And I think that this is great for the NFL. Instead of everybody sitting around and complaining about the anthem and worrying about all of this, we got Jalen Ramsey stepping into it, Deion Sanders, FSU DB style, and just laying it on the line, throwing all sorts of junk out there. 
I love everything about it. Again, Eli Manning has already commented on it. Then Golden, Golden Tate, uh, another Nashville guy. Uh, I watched Golden Tate play at Pope John Paul High School. The guy was untackleable. Went to Notre Dame. Was obviously very successful there. This is amazing. Golden Tate on Jalen Ramsey's uh, Matthew Stafford comments. He has his opinion. I don't know. When's the last time they played us? Reporter. Two years ago. What happened? Reporter. Lions won and he was crying on the bench. Oh, says Golden Tate. That is gold. I hope there is audio of this. I can't wait to play it all tomorrow morning on my radio show. There's no telling who else is going to weigh in and fire back. This is what the NFL needs. The NFL needs, I'm going to be honest with you, the NFL needs to take a page out of the WWE and have guys walking into the center of the ring with the microphone, calling people out like it's Raw, like it's SmackDown, dropping the mics, and then we go out and we play on Sunday. That's what the NFL needs. I want the Jalen Ramseys of the world to take the entertainment level in the NFL to the next, re- next, re- next level. I'll tell you this right now. I didn't care at all. I didn't care at all about Jags versus Giants, which I think is, is that a Monday night football game? I think that's a Monday night football game, isn't it? Am I wrong about that? I think that's a Monday night game. Anyway, Jags versus Giants is now so much more interesting to me than it ever was before. And by the way, a little bit of tidbit here. Could be some cool stuff from OutKick on September 10th. On September 10th, mark it on your calendar. A little bit of a tidbit, a little bit of an Easter egg, a little bit of an Easter egg to you from me. September 10th, there could be something very cool that OutKick will be doing that you guys will probably enjoy. Just tossing that out there as an Easter egg. not the book. The book comes out September 25th. Uh, September 10th, cool things coming. I think that's a Monday, right? Am I right? Monday, September 10th, cool things coming. Put a pin in it. Remember, say, hey, Clay said something cool was coming on September 10th. Might be a pony. Guess what it is. I'll actually let you guys guess. In Facebook and in, uh, and in Twitter, what do you guys guess? What do you guys guess could be cool coming on September 10th? I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'm just curious to see what you guys would guess in the comments as to what might actually be happening. Interesting guesses. Bam. Sure. Lots of interesting guesses. We'll see. We'll see whether somebody can get it. Um, It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm just going to say, Easter egg for everybody. Knock down 9-10. Put it on your calendar. And uh, and there's something cool that's going to come there. But the point is here, I love, love, love everything about Jalen Ramsey stepping in and becoming a big time playmaker here. Uh, I also think it's smart for Jalen Ramsey. It immediately brands him. Why did Richard Sherman become a superstar? Guesses on why Richard Sherman became a superstar? Because live on the NFC Championship game, after he batted down that pass between Colin Kaepernick and I think it was uh, Michael Crabtree, if I'm not mistaken, in the end zone in Seattle, he went and he did that interview with Aaron Andrews. Nobody knew who Richard Sherman was He did that live interview with Aaron Andrews and became an immediate celebrity. I think Jalen Ramsey is smart here. Now, quarterbacks may go after him even more aggressively than in the past, but he had the opportunity now in this GQ article to brand himself. I also will say this. I think that the Jags suspending him for a week was connected to this GQ article. I think they knew the GQ article was going to come out and I think they went ahead and suspended him for a week for what was in the GQ article, and they blamed it on the fallout and the tweets that he sent um, as a result. Or they talked to him when they knew this GQ article was coming out, and they said, hey, this is strikes one and two. Strike three is going to be a suspension, and then he went and tweeted it already. So we'll see what ends up happening, but I think there was probably a connection to that. Um, All right, uh, the Maryland fallout. The Maryland fallout to me is, uh, is continuing to grow. I saw where the Washington Post now is demanding that the president of the university, the athletic director, and the uh, and uh, obviously DJ Durkin all be fired. And uh, the, the, the Washington Post, again, major article that's up right now, 
and I think it's going to become easy and everybody's going to step in and say we have to completely clean the house and everybody has to be fired. Here's my, here's my difficulty with this. I think sometimes tragedies happen. All right? And I have an issue when you immediately blame everybody associated with the tragedy. I don't think that the president of Maryland should lose his job. I don't think that Damon Evans should lose his job. I'm not sure on DJ Durkin I would want to see what the evidence reflects because everything, this is important, when you make a decision, you set a precedent. And when you set a precedent, there's a great aphorism in the law that I think is important. It's tough cases make bad law. Okay? And what, the, what, what that means is tough cases make bad law because you set a precedent. And I've been big on this for a long time. A lot of people didn't pick up on it. When ESPN fired Kurt Schilling for his private sharing of a Facebook meme, they set the precedent at ESPN that you can be fired for your private political opinions if ESPN's corporate structure disagrees with them. And a lot of other corporations have followed that lead. I completely disagree with it. All right, I think every single one of you have the right to your political opinions outside of work and I think you should have the right to share them on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere else. You can be a far left liberal. You can be a far right conservative. I don't particularly care. I find it troubling when corporations are going through social media feeds and they're firing people for speech that they disagree with. Okay? Now, I think in general that the challenge that you run into in cases like these is it's sometimes, I said this the other day, if you have ever been on an athletic team, there has probably been a, a strength coach or a coach that has pushed you past physically where you thought you could go, right? I think it happens on a regular basis. I enjoy trying to do this. I'm not a high-level athlete. Three days a week, I go and I bust my ass for about 45 minutes in a workout. And when I finish that workout, I am laying on the ground and I am panting, and I have done everything I possibly can do during the course of that workout, all right? Um, and I, at that point in time, am basically done. During the workout, there are people who are coaching you and pushing you to go as hard as you can possibly go, all right? How do you know when a guy is definitely past where he can go? I think it's just a challenge. Now, I'm fine with the strength and conditioning coach being fired. I think you have to do that. He's there in a supervisory role. I think a lot of times when you push yourself to the limits, bad things happen. All right? And so I don't like setting the precedent that if somebody is in a workout and they die, that the president of the university should be fired. I don't like setting the precedent that if somebody dies in a workout, the athletic director should be fired too. I don't even like setting the automatic precedent that if somebody dies in a workout, the head coach should be fired because it doesn't allow you to examine all of the details surrounding it. Sometimes you find out when a kid gets to college, okay? Sometimes you find out when a kid gets to college that he's got a heart defect or you find out that he's got a health condition which no one could have known about. When you set the precedent that everybody gets fired, I think it's a bad precedent. I also, in general, all right, I also, in general, would say this. I don't agree with setting the precedent that when bad things happen, everybody has to be fired, especially when it's one singular act, okay, unless it's an egregiously bad act. Um, I think, in general, if you're going to fire somebody, it needs to be for a pattern of poor decision-making over a course of time. For instance, some people out there are going to say, well, how would you talk about Maryland versus Ohio State? Well, I think obviously the result in Maryland is infinitely worse than the result in Ohio State. But what kind of precedent existed that Maryland could have known this might happen? Whereas with Urban Meyer, if you decide to keep a guy employed despite him being arrested for domestic violence in 2009, you rehire him, you keep him employed despite a DUI. You keep him employed despite the fact that your wife has seen those photographs of additional domestic violence. That's several different individual acts that I think most coaches would have made the decision, we're going to fire him. Now, 
If you don't agree with your guys' the judgment, I said this on the radio show this morning. When you become a high echelon employee, what you are effectively being uh, paid for is your judgment. Okay? When you get to a high level, you are effectively being paid for your judgment. Almost everywhere. Whether you're the CEO of Google or you're the head coach of the Florida Gators. Wherever you are, when you're making millions of dollars at the top of the food chain, you're being paid for your judgment. To me, Urban Meyer's judgment failed. It also failed when he lied directly to the media at Big Ten Media Days. When he sat there and made a direct lie. Okay? That, to me, in conjunction with all those other things, if Ohio State decides to fire Urban Meyer, I think it's justified. Urban Meyer had an opportunity, knew these questions were coming. Urban Meyer could have gotten up and said something this simple. Guys, look, pretend I'm Urban Meyer, all right? I'm at at Big Ten Media Days. He's asked that question. Urban Meyer, all he had to say was, guys, I'm not going to get into all the details there, okay? I'm not going to get into all the details of the history of Zach Smith. All you need to know is this. I provided my superiors with every bit of information that I had, and then when he was not charged with a crime, we couldn't figure out whether it made sense to fire a guy based on accusations absent charges. I didn't want to fire a guy because I was concerned he might be 100% innocent. If that is all he had said, if that was all he had said, then I think Urban Meyer would be fine. That's not challenging. All he had to do was listen to his PR staff. All he had to do was use a scintilla of intelligence. What he could not do is stand up in front of the media and all the Big Ten fans and blatantly lie about his knowledge. To me, the cover-up is oftentimes worse than the crime. If Urban Meyer had said, guys, all that, if you think I made the wrong decision, that's on me. I didn't want to fire a guy because of an accusation that was not corroborated by charges being fired by the police. I treated Zach Smith the same way I'd want to treat a player, the same way I would want my children treated if they were employed by someone like me. I'm only going to fire a guy if charges are uh, out there. That would have actually... That would have actually been a perfect response, I think. Instead, he lied. And he got caught in his lie, and I think it's impossible to defend him. So anyway, the Maryland fallout that I think is an intriguing question, I think this is a larger question that all of college athletics has to answer. And I hinted at this yesterday. One, what are the obligations and responsibilities of uh, of a coach of major college athletics? What do we anticipate and expect? I don't believe... All right. I don't believe that there's any way possible that Urban Meyer or any other high-powered coach should be able to say, I told my superiors, Urban, you are the superior. You make $7 million a year. Saying, I told Gene Smith about this does not obviate you from the responsibility of making a determination for your program when a guy has been arrested multiple times for domestic violence. If a guy is getting arrested for a DUI in your state and you aren't finding out about it, first, I don't believe there's any way Urban didn't know. Second, I guarantee you this. How many people in public front-facing jobs in America would be able to be employed if they had been arrested for domestic violence and if they had been arrested for a DUI. I guarantee you, I'm going to have to block this guy, because sometimes you get people in here who are just such blatant homers that they're, I happen to look over and they're consistently just carrying water. I'm telling you right now, if you ever make the decision, all right, if you ever make the decision that you have to keep a guy who has been arrested for domestic violence and keep a guy who has been arrested for DUI, I think everybody out there who has a public-facing job would lose their job. I talk on the radio for a living, okay? My job about sports is not that serious. I'm on for three hours every morning. I try to be as entertaining, smart, original, funny as I can be. I would get fired in an instant if I got arrested for domestic violence and a DUI. There's a 0% chance that I would get to keep my job if the front page of the Nashville newspaper, which would certainly have it, you woke up one morning and you saw on your website, Clay Travis arrested for DUI 
and then a couple of months later you saw Clay Travis arrested for domestic violence. I might be able to survive one of those although I think it's questionable whether I would. There's a 0% chance that I would be able to sign to survive both of those. Okay? If that is the case for somebody who sits around and talks on the radio about sports how in the world did Urban Meyer have a lower standard of that than that for his uh, for his assistant coaches. Just think about that. And if you knew a guy in 2009 had been arrested for domestic violence and your wife came to you and said, Urban, Courtney Smith, who is married to Zach, you know Courtney, right? You'd be like, yes. She just sent me these photos and says Zach beat her up. If you already knew he had been arrested once in 2009 for domestic violence, would you continue to employ that guy? I have a show if one of my producers, if I found out that they had been arrested for domestic violence, I would probably say we need to fire them. Okay? That's my personal opinion. If I found out that they had been arrested again for domestic violence and my wife came to me with photos, I wouldn't allow somebody to work on my radio show with those allegations against them because I would say there's a lot of other people out there that want to do this job and can do this job just as well. Why did Zach Smith get to keep his job? He wasn't even that good of a wide receivers coach. There's a no way possible when you're at the top of the flow chart you've got to protect yourself and you've got to protect your program and you've got to protect your university. Urban Meyer's judgment fell apart in this situation. So I don't know what the full story is. I know that none of it makes sense. Zach Smith in the Brett McMurphy story supposedly said he would take the entire program down. I suspect that like a lot of college football programs Ohio State has guys getting paid. I don't care about that anymore. I don't care about players getting paid. I don't care about cars. I don't care about condos. I don't care about houses. I think that's a ridiculous standard the improper benefit standard. I think it's insane that Reggie Bush lost his Heisman Trophy because his family had a better house to live in while he played at USC. You know what's never an improper benefit? Rich parents. So the fact that you might have rich parents to me means that you can drive whatever car and live in whatever apartment you want. To me, uh, that is a story that I don't care about. But I think maybe that Urban Meyer is afraid of Zach Smith having knowledge about that. Players who were paid to play at Ohio State. I'm also not of the belief. I know people like to believe, oh, my program's clean. I think if it's happening at Alabama, it's happening at Ohio State. I think if it's happening at Ohio State, it's happening at Georgia, and it's happening at USC. Those schools are all recruiting the same player. You're not going to convince me that a five-star decided to go to Athens for free when Ohio State was offering him $50,000 or vice versa, right? You're just not going to convince me of that. And by the way, I don't care. My enjoyment of college football or college basketball is in no way impacted in a negative way if somebody else is driving a Range Rover. I just bought myself a brand new awesome Range Rover, right? Why? Because I'm getting paid well now to write and talk about sports for a living. Is your enjoyment of my show impacted by the fact that I got a nice car? I would suggest that if it is, you're a loser. You should be trying to figure out how to get your own nice car and how to get your own nice house and how to get your own hot wife, right? That's the entire purpose of capitalism. Be better. So I don't begrudge a kid who's got nothing that wants something for his talents because I want to sell my talents for as much money as I possibly can and I want you guys to all sell your talents for as much as you possibly can because that's how America rises. When everybody is able to maximize the money for their individual talents. I'm a pro-talent guy and so... I think he's got something on Urban. I don't know what it is. I don't buy into that he's Earl Bruce's grandson and that's why they decided to keep him. Uh, It just doesn't make sense. Urban Meyer's judgment fundamentally failed here and I think when you look at all the facts uh, it's an ugly situation and uh, I think Urban Meyer's judgment failed in the same way that many CEOs or other people in positions of power have failed and I think he deserves a, a censure for that. All right, I love all of you. My name is Clay Travis, Outkick the Show. We do it every single day. I'll be live tomorrow morning, 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern. We'll be having fun with Jalen Ramsey's comments, getting you ready for NFL preseason week two, counting down the days until week one of college football season. Again, big Saturday, my top five college football games in order that I can't wait to watch. Number one, no doubt about it, Washington-Auburn. 
Number two, I would say Michigan, Notre Dame. Number three, I think LSU, Miami. Number four, Tennessee, West Virginia. Number five, can't wait to see what's going to happen in Louisville and Alabama, even though I think it's going to be a bloodbath. And then on Monday night, I'm really interested to see Virginia Tech, FSU, early season ACC battle. Uh, love all of you guys. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. DBAP, boys and girls. But SBAP. Sometimes you got to SBAP. Share it with your friends if you enjoyed it. Props to Jalen Ramsey for finally giving us a non-NFL anthem related off-field season story to talk about. Loved it. I'll see y'all tomorrow. This has been Outkick the Show.